This morning is a beautiful morning because I feel the presence of God. And when there is the presence of God, there is joy of the Lord. When there is presence of God, there is liberation. When there is presence of God, there is healing. When there is presence of God, there is going to be miracles. When there is presence of God, the power of God is going to flow into each of your life. You may have just come for the sake of seeing the place, but God has brought you with some other intention. When David was sent into the battle by his father, Jesse, as a Tiffin boy, he never knew he was going to slay Goliath. But God knew it. When Saul was sent by his father to search for donkeys, he never knew that he's going to come back anointed as a king. But God knew it. You may be searching for a donkey right now, or you must be carrying some Tiffin. Do carry properly, because when your father says to do that, the end of the road, there is a big anointing and a blessing. Our God is a God who honors small things and big things equally. Our God is a God who honors small and big equally. It doesn't matter who you are this morning. You are most honorable in his sight. You are very precious in his sight. And he has something very, very special to tell you this morning. His mercy is new every day. I thank God that there are no refrigerators and deep freezers in the heaven. And neither microwaves. He gives you daily manna fresh. You can't live with yesterday's blessing. You need something new today. You can't live with yesterday's word. You need a new word today. And God is here to bless you with a new word. When Jesus was on the earth, you heard about how Jesus was. I really like the way he says things. He's a very exciting person to walk with. He never refused anybody. The blind came to him and they saw. The deaf came to him and they heard. The lame came to him and they walked. Even today, if you come into this place, blind, deaf, lame, you are going to go back as a whole person. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 I'm a neurosurgeon and I do open skull by license. But I love to praise God. But the greatest joy in my life is praising God. Because there is no neurosurgery in heaven. All I'm going to do is praising him. I know how to operate. I operate for hours together. I stitch, stitch it back after that. And I tell God, you heal it. I cut and he heals. By his stripes, you are healed this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever illness you have this morning, it is immaterial. In this hospital, there is healing in the name of Jesus. This hospital is far better than the greatest super speciality hospital in Bangalore. As you step into this hall, miracles are going to happen. And it's going to happen right now. As you took part in communion, it was happening. As you were singing, it was happening. You need to realize the miracle that is happening in your body right now. Hallelujah. 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 When Jesus was in the world, there was a crowd that followed him. This crowd came to see all the miracles. Eat the upper man stew that he gave in between. They enjoyed all the four good stories and parables. We also have the crowd. They come on Sundays, they sit, clap hands and say, praise the Lord. It's like watching one day crickets. When Sachin hits one six, big clapping. They are crowd. They like to clap, laugh, dance, enjoy. They are enjoying all the time. Jesus was happy with the crowd. He was not unhappy. He said, why don't you give them something to eat? He was happy with everyone who came around him. But there was a different group of people called the disciples. They were not same as the crowd. They followed him when the crowd left him. They listened to him when the crowd never understood what they were speaking. They obeyed him when crowd never bothered for him. This morning, the first question that the Spirit of God wants to ask you, are you here at the level of as a crowd, a spectator, just watching a one-day cricket, or are you in serious business with God? Do you want to be a disciple? God is waiting for you. 
he needs you this morning for the kingdom of God he wants to use the talent and time and the person you are as a great person in the kingdom of God hallelujah there was a group which was called the disciple but there was another group called the favorite disciples anybody knows their name Peter John and James they were taken into special areas you may be a disciple today but God wants you to become his favorite there was one disciple who even had the audacity to lean on his chest others were shaking Peter was shaking others were wondering what to do but here is this guy Jesus is talking never mind it's my Jesus leaning on his chest that is the beloved disciple who wants to be the beloved in the sight of God this morning God has something special for you change your level of working and make sure that you become closer and closer and closer to him hallelujah hallelujah you may be searching for something this morning but the answer was already found in Jesus you may be looking for a special intervention in your life but God is going to give you more than you can ever, ever imagine I'm going to narrate a small incident as a meditation this evening from the book of Mark chapter 4 verse 35 we will quickly go and I will conclude in the right time gospel of Mark chapter 4 verse 35 Till evening, Jesus was doing what? He was preaching, telling stories, doing miracles, having a good time with the crowd. He was having a good time with the crowd. You know, Jesus once walked on the water. You know that story? And Peter, the great man, seeing Jesus walk on the water, said, Jesus, can I also walk on the water? You sit in the boat, why do you want to walk on the water? The other disciples never thought of it. When Jesus was coming walking on the water, Peter was so excited, I've never seen a man walk on the water. Here is Jesus walking. If he can walk, why can't I walk? Jesus, can I walk? Come on, Peter, you want to try that, you try. If somebody is here today wanting to walk on water, go ahead, God is there, he's not going to tell you no. He never says no to anything you ask. Psalms 37 verse 5 says, Delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. After my MS surgery, I was working in all India, uh, Dr. Segal's nursing home in Delhi. And I was passing through the road in the, T the DTDC bus. And I said, Lord, you have said delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. I want to work in all India Institute. And I told everybody I am going to get the job in Ames. I am going to apply there. The next day I took my biodata, I went there. Dr. Banerjee, uh, chief professor and head of the department, I took an appointment from his secretary and went and met him. I said, Dr. Banerjee, I want to work with you. What? I am George Kaur, MS from general surgery from CMC Ludhiana. My credentials are excellent. I'm so excited. I want to do neurosurgery. He said, we have no options like that. We have an exam. We have special quota for government service, military people. This is the best premier institution in the country. One fellow can't just walk in one day and say, I want to work with you. How can I say I delight in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. You better give it to me. But I kept telling myself. Finally, for 20 minutes we were talking. He was about to kick me out. I realized his mood and I said, sir, I'm very happy to have met you. But may I kindly leave my biodata with your secretary? And I left it there. I went back to Segal nursing home. All my friends asked, Kaur, George, what happened? I said, I got, man, I'm getting very soon. They're going to call me right now. You know, I had that much of faith in my mind. Five days later, I get a call saying, Dr. Banerjee wants to see you. Wow. I quickly took a half day leave and ran to the India Institute. Sir, did you call me? Yeah. You said you want to really join. Are you interested? I said, yes, you can join tomorrow. I could never imagine. Hallelujah. 
delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart is mentioned in this word of God and this word can never change his holy word never changes his promises never changes you claim it you get it I told God you know I delight in you this is how we know each other we have no secrets so you better give me my desire he gave it to me I got excited I jumped up went and filled my forms got the job appointment letter gave it into the accounts department ran to the canteen I didn't know what to do I was up in third heaven I ordered a coffee I didn't care who is going to come and sit in front of me I'm going to tell him one fellow came and said hi I'm George Cobor I just got into neurosurgery here I got a non PG job today tomorrow I am working here he said I am doctor so and so I resigned from neurosurgery yesterday <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah Woo! I asked why did you resign I got a job in England God had to work hard <laughs> the Israelites were sleeping overnight next to the Red Sea but God was not sleeping he was blowing when you are sleeping he is blowing blowing to make a way through the Red Sea overnight and he worked well they walked through the sand with two walls of water on the sides they walked across the dry lands there may be sea ahead of you there may be mountains on the side there may be an army chasing you but there is going to be a way across because Jesus says I am the way I am the truth and I am the life hallelujah John chapter 10 verse 10 says I have come that he may have life and life in abundance you have not been brought into the service to have an ordinary on a life get up in the morning oh what a life so much to study so much of work very busy 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 back pain neck pain all pain headache mental tension trauma desperation a rat race only rat run don't human beings don't have that that's why it's called rat race I never had a rat race but no rats is there to race with me anyway God is doing everything for you sin I told yesterday in the prayer meeting don't miss this prayer meetings huh? once a month fasting and prayer I'm sure next time when I come I hope all the church will be here for that hallelujah and somebody came and told me tell us every day what Holy Spirit was doing so I told you one thing is that all in the Institute stuff I have so many things like that so then I told him a lot of stuff we were excited half an hour we were talking and suddenly he said I am leaving to England I have a form application for MCH neurosurgery from CMC Velo. I am leaving only three more days left to apply receiving date is over if you are interested you can take it I grabbed it I filled it up sent it by speed post I got up MCH admission in that application form my God is great if I miss to read the newspaper he reads the paper every day some people think God has to read India today to understand what is happening in India he knows even before it happens he is not watching Asia net because he knows what is happening he knows he holds my future in his hand he is not worried about the rest of the things hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. no hallelujah is very small here hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 why say a hallelujah for Kovuru got an admission in Bellor praise the Lord hallelujah you say for him you will also get admission in Bellor hallelujah when I went to Velour, I can tell you again, if I tell all the stories, I won't have time to finish my message. When I went to Velour, they said, you will not get admission here. I was called for the interview. I said, why? You have not done PG. Five people are waiting with three, two, three years here. I have not done because you are not sponsored by any church. You are not a CMC Velour candidate. You are a CMC Luciana candidate. There are two, three CMC Velour candidates. You have no right to be here. Why are you here? The previous night they told me.
I went for a prayer meeting there, youth prayer meeting, and I was shouting and dancing and racing like this. And I went in the night, we were singing, and the night the Lord spoke to me, it is not by might, it is not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. The next day I went for the interview, not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit, saith the Lord. Not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit, saith the Lord. Not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit, saith the Lord. I'm going for MCH neurosurgery interview. How many of you have gone like this? That is why you don't get. You need to appear in your examination with God's grace. Yesterday, those who were here, those who are not here, let me see. I'm sure a lot of people are ready to. How many of you are not here yesterday? Oh, wonderful. I mean to repeat all my stories. See, I, was, I told you I was born as a hydrocephalic baby. A very big head. Hydro means water. Cephalus means head. Any doctors, any medicals, anybody from medical field? Yes. So you have seen some hydrocephalics. Big head, full of water, good for nothing. Mentally retarded, won't grow. I was born like that. I was created by Heavenly Father in my mother's womb as a hydrocephalic. But the Bible says I am fearfully and wonderfully created. Even though I was created with extra water, I was fearfully created. Each one of you are specifically designed by the powerful and mighty hand of God. You are not a net result of an accident. But you are created with a specific purpose. You are not here by an accident, but by a special call of the Lord. God is going to fulfill that for you this morning. When I was taken to Dr. Jacob Abraham and Jacob Chandi in Velour, they said, this boy will not live. The neurosurgery that I practice now rejected me. They said, even if you somehow manage to make him live, he will be good for nothing. Now I do such children, I operate. Ventricular peritoneal shunt surgery. Put a tube in the ventricle, put it into the abdomen, and make the water flow. I thank God there was no such a surgery that day. Otherwise, some neurosurgeon would have laid out his knife on my head. When all the doors closed, my parents lifted their eyes unto the hills. You heard a little story about my mother and my father. They believed in the living God, not a dead God. They believed in a God who answers prayers not a deaf God. They believed in a God who intervenes every day in personal lives if you allow him to. And they believed in a God of deliverance. And that God heard their prayer. They left me as a sick child and went to seek after the kingdom of God. And God came after me. He healed me. Why am I here? He said, I have closed my institution. That is nothing great. For a God who could heal a hydrocephalic baby and make him in the neurosurgeon, I can sell my institution. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. My life is a gift of God. My degree is a gift of God. My family is a gift of God. My health is a gift of God. Everything that I own and possess is a gift of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Why do I say more hallelujah than you do? Because I get more blessings. The more hallelujah I say, the more blessing I come. I told one fellow 10 years ago, you tell hallelujah like me, you will get a hospital. He never believed. When I got a hospital, he started believing. <laughs> now he is trying to say hallelujah. 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 My God is worthy for all the praises that you can do today. Even if you stay back for all three services, he's worthy for your praise. Hallelujah. 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 God healed a hydrocephalic baby, George Kaur, and did not leave him like SSLC, MBBS, but he made him a neurosurgeon to take care of such people. When I got my admission in MCH neurosurgery in CMC Bellow, I saw the unseen, powerful, miracle-working hand of God working, giving me that single seat where there were more than 50, 60 eligible, honorable, 
powerful professor's children waiting for that seat. Even the chief who gave me the seat didn't know why he gave me. Hallelujah. I love that whistle. Hallelujah. 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 I was just telling yesterday that I, doing my MS exam, I used to study 18 hours. My wife was so shocked. How can a man study like this? Three, four months together, day in and day out, I was studying. And I was sleeping. I had finished my theory, a couple of practicals. The last day I was sleeping at around 2.30. She said, sleep early today. So I went to bed and then I was sleeping. Suddenly, something woke me up. I couldn't sleep. 4, 4.30, I jump up and I take the plastic surgery book. And I study for 20 minutes, cancer of the cheek. Cancer of the cheek. And I close it up and sleep. The first short case I get the next morning is the cancer of the cheek. Hallelujah. You don't need an MRI to diagnose a patient. When the patient walks in, God tells you what he has the problem. One patient came to me one year ago, was getting treated for eight years by seven or eight new, great neurologists of my town. He was held by two people and he was walking in like this, big file, CT, MRI, everything. And he said, Parkinson's disease and he's on a one kg medicine for that. God told me, touch him, he's got fluid in the brain, normal pressure, hydrocephalus. Go and ask him to get a CT scan. The first question I asked him, Matthew, Unnieta, have you got a CT done? Nobody asked me, doctor. Please go get a CT and come. There was a huge hydrocephalus. I put a shunt tube. He walked home. He became a believer. He, saw, he said he saw an angel in the ward. My duty doctors are angels in my hospital. And he came with the big mustache like this and very, very strong, powerful man of the church. He went, that, went back as a lamb of God. In the book of James, it says, if you lack wisdom, if you are a hydrocephalic baby, let him ask of God who gives in plenty without measure so that you may be more wise than others. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have five more minutes. I will just close and come back to my portion. What did Jesus say? Let's go over to the other side. He did not say, let's go to the middle of the water and drown. He said, let's go to the other side. Just as he was sitting, the disciples decided to go take him. The Jesus was seated in the disciples' boat. Make sure that he is in your boat. Some people like to remain in the boat next to Jesus' boat. Like pastor's boat, they have houses near pastor. They walk around with pastor. Any emergency, he prays. The boat, he, they are pakka sure that the other boat has Jesus. They hang out with him. Any emergency? Like we have a great man who was sitting on the tree to see him. You know him? Zacchaeus. He wanted to just see him. But Jesus not wanted to see him. Wanted to spend time with him. Zacchaeus. Oh, he knew I was up here. Huh? Please come down. He came running. He knew even my name. Oh, this is fantastic. So I don't have to give him my visiting card. Now people like to give the visiting card an email address and say, Jesus, I will call you when I need. Thank you for the introduction. It's good to know you. Once in a while when my child has an examination or some problem at home, we desperately need help from people like you. Anyway, we know where to come. But the disciple had Jesus in his boat and they were growing. He said, let's go over to the other side. And what happened? They went. And what happened? There was a great storm. You read there, you find there was a great. Didn't Jesus know that there was a storm? He knew? Yes. So if I was logically thinking, if I was an MBA graduate and logically thinking, I would tell my people, see, there's going to be a great storm. I am the son of man. I'm sleeping here. Don't trouble me. We are reaching across. So let's go comfortably and let's go. Why didn't he do like that? If he tells you there's a good, going to be a great storm, he will say, let's go tomorrow. <sighs> Who likes to take a ship in a storm, you see? Nobody. But the experience of taking a ship in the stormy sea is more fun than going a non-stormy sea. How many of you like to have that fun? 
to break the storm, to break the impossible wall, to break the wall, the Goliath that is standing in you today. Something which you think you can never happen is going to happen this morning for you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Because the Lord and master of this world, the creator of the whole universe, is now riding in your boats. Make sure that he is in your boat. If he is not there, please welcome him. My Jesus is very decent. He doesn't jump walls or break open gates. He says, I stand at the door of the, your heart and knock. If you open kindly, then I will come. I will come and have a lime juice with your thumbs up or a Coca-Cola or a Pepsi or coffee tea. Is that how he said? No, I will have supper. Who do you have supper with? The person who wants to live with you that night. He is not for waiting for a short interaction with you. He wants to have a supper with you. The Jesus you encounter here this morning, make sure don't leave him here. Take him along with you back. He wants to have a supper tonight with you. Hallelujah. 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 And they were going, the storm was very high, very difficult. The disciples said, teacher, guru, don't you know that we drown? Don't you care that we drown? Don't you understand that we are drowning? Oh, you people are too much. No, I know very well you are drowning. No, he did not shout at them. He said, let there be calmness. He shouted at the storm. You be still. Don't trouble my disciples. Storm became quiet. They were surprised, amazed by the great obedience of the nature to the creator of the nature. They were afraid. Then they realized who was with them. They went to the other side. Why was there storm that day? Because Jesus was going to heal a demon-possessed man across the sea. That's the only ministry he had there. He was crying there. He was going to come back. Neither the disciples nor anyone else knew that, but the devil knew that. So he thought, let me stop it with a storm. Devil, you can't stop God's work with a storm. He's above all storm this morning. Any storm that is coming across your life, my God is a greater than any storm this morning. Hallelujah. Let me conclude with the final verse and one verse as a sweet dish, as a dessert. The final verse is a question. Why can't you drown if you are with Jesus? It's a question. You cannot drown because he cannot drown. You cannot drown because he said we will go to the other side. He did not say let's go to the middle and drown. You cannot drown because everything else will obey his voice other than you. Make sure that you, you also obey his voice. He is the author and perfecter of your faith and he will take you across. The last desert ice cream for you. The book of Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17. That's a quick verse and I close with that. That's just a desert for you. Zephaniah 3 verse 17. The, the Lord your God is with you. He's among you. He's with you. He's not in the neighbor's house. He's not somewhere else. He's not a God who is sitting far away and looking at your misery. But he is with you in the same boat. The Lord your God is with you. Then he is, mighty. he is mighty to save you from any destruction, any storm, any calamity, any disaster, any recession, any Y2K, any dangerous disease. My Lord is mighty to save you from anything. His name is above all names. His name is above diabetes. His name is about hypertension. His name is about cancer. His name is about unemployment. His name is about financial crisis. His name is about any name. My Jesus name is about all names. He is mighty to save. And then. Just like what you heard, God has created you to delight in you. I was sharing with him 
Jesus is my greatest entertainment. TV is not. He is my provider. He is my protector. He is my promotion. He is my delight. He is my greatest entertainment. There is no greater joy than sitting in the presence of God. May God open your eyes, open your heart, and open your life to have this great, delightful journey, rest of your life with Jesus. Shall we close our eyes for a word of prayer? If there is somebody who has never received Jesus before, he's standing at the door of your heart and waiting for you. Will you allow him to come into your heart? Somebody who is passing through stormy nights and days these days, he's there with you to calm your sea. The sea and the nature listens to his voice. If there is somebody who is afraid, worried, commit your ways unto him. Delight in him and he will give you the desires of your heart. Is there somebody willing to say, Lord, here am I. With all my mistakes and failures and faults, I want to surrender myself to you. From today onwards, I want to live like you want me to. I want to be your child. I will read your word. I will pray. I will delight in you and I will live close to you. Take me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Make me into something different. My dreams are still to become true. I surrender my life into your hands. I, you are my entertainment. You are my provider. You are my protector. If there is anybody who is new today, who has never accepted Jesus Christ before, today is the day of salvation. If somebody who wants to dedicate their life once again, today is the day of rededication. If somebody wants to have a healing touch or a deliverance, today is the day of deliverance in your life. I want you to pray for yourself and I want to pray for you too. Will you pray silently with your right hand up and I'm going to pray for you. Only for those who are asking for a prayer. All those who need a prayer, who are surrendering their life, who are taking new decisions, who are committing themselves, who are accepting Jesus Christ. I see so many hands. Your prayer requests are really honored in the sight of God. If there is requests, you can really give it to us and let us know. We'll all be praying for you. Wherever you are, stand up and I'm going to pray for you. Let all the pastors and leaders pray with me for these people. Shall we pray together for all those who are in need, who have lifted their hands, who have accepted Christ, who are looking for a healing, who are looking for a deliverance, or looking for a breakthrough this morning. God is here to help them. He is here in our midst. Mighty to save, strong and mighty. Our most loving God, we come to you this morning. Asking forgiveness for all our sins. Forgive us, Lord. Cleanse us, Lord. Make us whole, Lord. Accept us as we are. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, we commit these people who have decided to commit their life into your hands. Lord, we pray that you will hold them by their hand. Lord, we pray that you will lead them with your hand. Lord, you are the author and perfecter. You said that you will take us across the sea to the other shore. We know you are coming near. And you are with us right now. We command them in your safe and mighty arms. In Jesus' name, we bless them. Be healed in the name of Jesus. We command all powers of darkness to leave them. We pray that there will be a blessing and great revival in their life. We bless this congregation. We give you all glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. God bless.